Welcome. In this video, we are going to look at the goodness of fit test. Sometimes in statistics, we like to see if a data follows a particular distribution. Let us look at this in the context of this business problem. A retailer receives shipments of batteries in packages of 50. The retailer randomly samples 400 packages and tests to see if the batteries are defective. A sample of 400 packages revealed the observed frequency shown to the right. The retailer would like to know if it can evaluate the sampling plan using a binomial distribution with the, sample, the, numbers, the number of trials is equal to 50 and the probability of success is 0 0.02. Test at a significance level of 0 0.01. So the first step is to formulate the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that the distribution of defective batteries is binomial. And looking at all this option, this is the right option. And the alternative hypothesis is that the distribution of defective batteries is not binomial. The second step is to specify what the significance level is. And for this test, our significance level alpha is 0 0.01. And then the third step would be for us to collect the sample data and compute the chi-squared test statistic. Here we are going to compute the chi-square test statistic to three decimal places. So what we're going to do using Minitab is to copy this data to Minitab. And then we paste the data. Now you recall the chi-square equation as discussed in the lecture video. I would and we state it here, the chi-square formula looks in this form. We have the observed data minus the expected square divided by the expected. So we're going to use, uh, create this formula in Minitab to compute the test statistic. But first, the first thing we want to do is generate the binomial probability based on these categories, based on the distribution that we are referencing, which is a binomial distribution with n equals to 50, and the probability of success is 0 0.02. So to do that, I'm going to label this, um, name this column binomial probability. And now we go to calculate probability distribution binomial and select probability. Our number of trials is 50 and our probability of success is 0 0.02. Now our In our input column is C1. So select C1. And then our output column is the binomial probability. And now we click OK. And we have the binomial probabilities. I will name this defects. Now, the last um, call, uh, row here is four or more as stated in the question, so four or more. Now, the binomial probability would simply be the sum of all of these probabilities. So you subtract this sum from one to get four or more. So let's change this column to a, to a text column, format cell and text. 
and in here I'm going to write four or more. Now I'm going to compute the value and store it in cell C9 and then copy the value from C9 back in here. And so to do this, we click on the calculator and I type in your C9. And what are we computing? One minus the sum of all the binomial probabilities that we have in there. And so that gives us the so we can co copy this and paste it right here. And we can delete this out. All right, so now we have the binomial probabilities. Now the next thing we're going to do is compute the expected frequency. And the expected frequency, which in a chi-square equation is E, denoted E, is simply the sum of the of the observed values multiplied by the binomial probabilities. So how do we do that using Minitab? We can click on the calculator, and now our output would be the expected frequency. So expected frequency, and that would be the sum of the frequency of occurrence, so the total sum, and multiply that by the respective binomial probabilities. And so what that did is add all of these values and multiply it by these to get that, multiply it by this to get that, and so on and so forth. All right, so the next step now is to find uh, the, the contribution to chi square. So I'll call this the contribution to chi square. And so for this, we would also use our calculator. So the, the columns we need is C2 and C4. So C2 is our O in the equation, and C4 is the E in the equation. So we go to calculator, and now our output will be the contribution to chi-square. That's what we have in here now. And our expression would be, so in brackets, we have the observed, which is this, minus the expected, and we're going to square that by using the caret sign, which is shift six raised to the power of two. And we are dividing that by the expected. So that's the um, chi square equation. And of course, when we sum all these columns, that will give us our test statistic. So now let's click OK. And that gives us the contribution to chi square. And in this next cell or column, I'm going to call this my chi, the, the chi square, the uh, chi square, which is what we are trying to compute as a test statistic. So pretty much we're going to sum these values. And how do we do that? You click on calculator, and now our outputs will be in chi square, which is a C7. And what we want to do is sum the contribution to chi square. That's OK. And there we go. We have a test statistic. And to three decimal places, that would be 9.487. Good job. So that's how to compute the test statistic. Our next step will be to determine the critical value. What is the critical value? And for that, we need to know what the degrees of freedom is and what our alpha, the significant level is. There are 
four, five categories, one, two, three, four, five, our degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one. So that will be four. So how do we determine the critical values using Minitab where alpha is 0 0.01? I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. The first way, let's use graph probability distribution plot view probability. Our critical value is also a chi-square value. So we change this to a chi-square and enter the degrees of freedom, which is four. Now, our rejection region is the area to the right and the alpha is 0 0.01. And then you click OK. You wait a bit while I spin, you can get a cup of coffee while you're waiting. <laughs> and in the meantime, I verify that alpha is 0 0.01. Yes, that's correct. And now we have it right here. Our chi-square, our critical value is 13.28. Now the one, the answer should be in four decimal places. Unfortunately, you can't um, change this. And that's why I'm going to show you the other way of how to determine the critical value in which you can change the number of decimal places. So we click on calculator. You go to probability distribution, chi square. It's the number one there. And you change this to inverse cumulative. And now watch this, what we're going to do here. Our degrees of freedom is four. Now our input constant will be what? Since we're looking at the inverse cumulative, it's going from left to right. So if this area is 0 0.01, the area that is not shaded here will be what? That would be 0 0.99. And that will still give us the same um, critical value in the chi-square distribution. And so we click OK. And there we have it. You can see here 13.28 to two decimal places. And this is the chi-square value to four decimal places. That is 13 points. So what we have here is 13.2767. And of course, you can always change this to, as, to any decimal place as you want. All right. So that's how to determine the chi-square, the critical chi-square value. So to four decimal places, it is 13.2767. Well done. All right. So what's next? The, now we, we, we are going to reach a decision. So to draw a conclusion. Now, now our decision can be based on, so before we draw a conclusion, we need to understand the decision level. We can make our decision using comparing the test statistic with a critical value, or we could find the, the p-value from our test statistic and compare that to alpha. Remember, if P is low, HO must go. <laughs> well, looking at this, um, our test statistic is less than our critical value. So meaning that this is our test statistic is not in the rejection region, which means that we will not reject the null hypothesis. So the possible answer is one of these two, but there's just one answer. Do not reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the retailer can evaluate the sampling plan using a binomial distribution with n equals 50 and p equals 0 0.02. Good job. So that's pretty much how to compute the goodness of fit. Um, the goodness of the goodness of fit test using Minitab. I hope this example has had been helpful. All the very best.